Hello and welcome to another edition of For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guest today is Kathy Zoll. She is from the New London Homeless Hospitality Center. She's a returning guest, although it's been a little while since she's been on, so welcome back. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, homeless in general. So I kind of want to start with that. We'll get to the center in a moment, but you know, just describe, are, are people, are there misconceptions about what the homeless really is? Oh, I think we're, there's a lot of misconceptions. Um, I Just to sort of highlight a few of them is I think most people have a sort of an image of homeless individuals as the person who's camping outside or the person who maybe is, is living in their car, and that certainly exists. Right, and that's what they see. That's what they see. And, and there are, unfortunately, in our communities, people who have been homeless a long time, people who are living outside and people who are living in their cars, those are all happening. But I think what many people don't realize is that there are among us who you would not even notice, people you went to high school with who are homeless, people you worked with, people who live down the street from you, and that people come to homelessness by a lot of different routes. Uh, maybe they lost a job and really just didn't have, like many of us, hadn't saved up a lot and so lost their apartment a medical problem, a car breakdown, a relationship that, that breaks apart. And so I think there's, homelessness is a bit like an iceberg. There's the little piece at the top, which people see, and that's very important. But there's also a lot of other people, our neighbors and friends, who are experiencing homelessness, and most people wouldn't even know it just to, you know, to look at, at the world around them. When they see that person that they may have known in school, or someone who they knew were, were maybe were financially successful, it really is a shock to them when they, how could this, how could this happen to them? How could it happen? I, and it's a shock to people who are homeless. Yes, I mean, you would, you would be amazed. I mean, sometimes when I sit with people and they say in a million years, they never expected to find themselves in this particular position. And, um, you know, there's there's a tragedy with that. There's a certain kind of humility that comes with that. And sometimes people that experience that leave that situation and get back on their feet. Most do. Most people don't stay homeless. They, they regroup. People are incredibly resilient. But I think they leave that experience with a little more of an understanding that it could happen really to any of us. And um, it, it's, not, it's not something that uh, is... It, it just happens. Yeah. It happens. It happens uh, all, out of the blue, possibly all of a sudden. And I think also uh, they leave it with a, an appreciation of life in general, how precious it, precious it is, and also to be grateful for, I guess, you could call the little things, or maybe just things that we may have taken uh, for granted before we fell on hard right. times. Right. And I think the other thing that also surprises me is that uh, homelessness is devastating. It's devastating to, but sometimes it only takes a little bit to help people get back out of it. Um, we've had people who got their car repaired, and because of that, they could go to an interview and they could get back to work. It's one domino, isn't it? It, it is. And sometimes, just like it's one domino going down, it's one domino going up. And that's what makes this work so satisfying, is that sometimes you provide something that seems very small, but it starts a person back on the path to getting back into housing. You used a word before, humility. How about a word like pride, where sometimes uh, someone may not want to or know how to ask for help, or they're too prideful to admit that they're, on, that they're dealing with hard times in order, and just if they could do that, put the pride aside, their life would be so much better because there is so much help available, isn't there? There is and there isn't. I mean, in other words, um, I wish I could say that we had a vast network of supports for people who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, we don't. Um, the shelter that we run, for example, is very, very simple. It's, you know, 26 beds in a big room. That's not much. Um, but again, all of us, when we hit hard times, we got to ask for help and use the resources that are available. But there are s some resources available there, out there. There are some resources available, and I think um, Connecticut particularly has trying to do more, trying to end long-term homelessness. Um, there's especially a lot of resources for veterans. I think everybody has come to recognize that that's really, you know, 
one, no one who served their country should be experiencing homelessness. So the Veterans Administration has done uh, a great deal. So yes, there are resources. Um, from my point of view, not quite enough, yeah. but uh, there are supports. The, the, the veterans, just to stay on that for a minute, how does that happen? I mean, again, you can go in so many different directions with the reasons why, but it does. And like you said, they have resources available to them too. Right. Well, they have even more resources. So the Veterans Administration is very active on helping people find housing, uh, providing mental health services, uh, substance abuse services, employment services. So veterans, I think, really, uh, we pretty quickly wrap around them the supports that they need. Now, when it comes to the homeless, again, it crosses all economic lines, financial lines, race. It does, it does not discriminate at all. And also, um, one might think it's in the big cities or the, uh, the, the lower income areas. It can be in small towns, rural, rural areas, as well as big cities, right? right? Well, I think, yes, homelessness can happen anywhere. I do think that if you become homeless, you're likely to gr gravitate to a city because um, maybe there's a meal program there, so at least you can get something to eat. Maybe there's a shelter there. So there is a, a sort of a more of an impact on cities from homelessness, not because necessarily the homelessness started there, but once you become homeless, there's better transportation, there's more public facilities, so that it is true that the cities end up with a, a larger percentage of the homeless individuals. This, the recession that we've recently come out of, did that play a big role in a lot of the homelessness that exists? Uh, definitely, yeah. and definitely. And I think um, there's a, a lot of people, you know, marginal skills. Um, the job market for unskilled labor is shrinking faster and faster. The other place there's been a lot of focus on is people coming out of prison. There's, there are real barriers to people with, with who, even if they've served their time and they're on a new path, that record can prevent them from getting employment. So you add a few of those factors, maybe you're a little bit older, you don't have that much education, you've had some time in prison, and there are people who look every single day from work and simply cannot turn up anything. Yeah. Let's talk about the New London Homeless Hospitality Center specifically. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, we are um, an emergency shelter, so we have people, usually there's a, almost every single day, there's a few new people who show up, newly homeless, and we provide a place of welcome and a place that they can sleep and uh, be safe and take a shower and do laundry and, and have a little space to lock up their important documents. And then probably equally important, somebody to sit down and help them what's their path out? Do they need help finding housing? Do they need help replacing their IDs? Do they need help uh, connecting to mental health or substance abuse services? And really just try to give people that step up to back into home, uh, out of homelessness. The shelter is only the first step. It's that safe haven to just have a place to land, so to speak. That's but exactly right. what do you do after that? And that's where all these support services that's really exactly come That's exactly right. I mean, it's hard to describe um, a lot of people who have experienced they haven't been sleeping because they've been afraid. Let's say they were in their car, they're, they're worried. So partly the shelter is just a place that to, you know, just, just breathe for a right. minute, you know? And exhale. E exhale, that's yeah. the word I was looking for. And then after that, um, we see a lot of people. So we probably see five, six, seven hundred people a year. And so we're a very small organization we don't have the time to help every single person uh, do everything they need, so people are really have to let us know how we can help. And we have small amounts, but basically people regroup and their families, their friends, a little help from us, sometimes their churches and other support groups, and people are resilient and they, they get back on their feet. Depend, uh, depending on the reason why they came to you in the first place, whether it's substance abuse or maybe uh, the woman uh, was mistreated. Uh, will that determine whether your place is appropriate or maybe someplace else might be more appropriate for them? Well, there's a special system for people fleeing domestic violence um, because obviously the fear always there is that if the abuser knows where the woman is, uh, that person might pursue them into the shelter. So there's a separate system for people who are at imminent risk of domestic violence. Other than that, we're pretty much it. 
Right, Depend, regardless of uh, yes. what the reason. Yes. Uh, homelessness specific to the area that you serve, is there, uh, is there anything that you notice that's specific? Or, or well, is it just kind of run the we're gamut? Serving fi we're not serving families. There's a separate system for families. For single individuals, um, I, I, there's no major trends. I think one of the trends I would definitely highlight is mental health. Yeah. I think we've all heard a lot about the mental health system. And for a lot of people, they sort of spiral downward in their mental health status and end up homeless and with us, which is very challenging. Um, yeah. You know, substance abuse is still rampant, I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, again, not, you know, the majority of people, but a number of people end up homeless because of, you know, that reason. So it's such a mixed bag. It's like a people who, who were working maybe a week ago and now are homeless, to people that have been homeless a long time, to 18-year-olds, to I think we have somebody with our in our shelter right now who's, believe it or not, is 85. Wow. And suffering from Alzheimer's. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah. So we're trying to explain to this person who has Alzheimer's and is 85 years old why he's here and every day, why am I here, what's going on. Yeah. We're, we're doing our best, you right. know, but it's it's not it's like a you're challenge. a doctor, you know. Uh, no, but, yeah. you know, it's a challenge, but we try. It, it must also be very disheartening the, the, on the younger side that you're talking about when someone's life is, is barely started, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're in there that young and, you know. But I guess in, in another sense, maybe there's the possibility that they can turn it around and, and, and uh, improve their life if they're that young. Again, it's like such a mix. There's the people who think, uh, well, I don't really like mom and dad's rules so much, <laughs> you know, and we tell those people, yeah. go home yes. and live with mom and dad's right. rules. Or how about stay at the shelter and see which would you prefer? Would you prefer to stay at right. the shelter or maybe kind of abide by mom and right. dad's rules? But on the other hand, there are some pretty bad parents. Yeah. And there are kids who really are, are need to escape, in a sense, from, from their families. So again, it's just this whole range, um, you know, it doesn't fit into any one box. We're going to take a break and come back. Why don't you give out the uh, website for the shelter, people can learn more. Yeah, um, NLHHC, New London Homeless Hospitality Center .org. And We'll put a graphic up on the screen too. Kathy's all New London Homeless uh, Hospitality Center. Uh, we'll take a short break and come back. I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Stay with us. Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guest today is Kathy Zoll from the New London Homeless Hospitality Center. Um, how was it, from your point of view and what you do, uh, dealing with this past winter, uh, which was really brutal? You could only I, I, shake I'm your almost, head. I'm, yeah. I'm almost speechless. Yeah, um, that's how bad it was. It, it was really hard, and, and I guess the one thing that I would say is it's, we, uh, in the winter, we don't turn anyone away. So we have 40 beds. There were nights we had 60 people in that shelter. It was just so So you cold. want to talk about cabin fever times yeah. 60. Yeah. It, it was intense. But the weather the we have now, you must be loving this. Yeah. yeah oh. But on the other hand, you know, our goal is we don't want anybody left outside in the cold. Yeah. And we did that. So I'm proud that we, we made it. And is, so your job and, and is really changes depending on the time of year it is, right? Yeah, well, it's dangerous to be outside any time of year, so right. we're always trying to get as many people in as we can, but particularly in the winter, we have a commitment not to leave anybody outside. So uh, to further that a little bit more, uh, the shelter is great, even if you have to cram 60 in there, but progress toward like more permanent housing in the area. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think uh, the, um, the state of Connecticut is investing quite a bit in something called permanent supportive housing, which is basically for people who have uh, a disability, a mental health challenge, and have been homeless a long time. And so we are really seeing uh, a number of people get that kind of supportive housing. The other thing that we're investing in is what's called rapid rehousing. And the idea there is 
let's say you lost your job and you get a new job, but you're working um, someplace and you're making minimum wage, and maybe you're only working part-time. So you're not going to take home a lot of money. And for most apartments, you need to have first month's rent and security deposit. So rather than somebody staying homeless for weeks and weeks and weeks while they slowly kind of try to accumulate money. enough money for that, what we'll do is we'll say, well, we'll help you with that first month's rent. Get the person into housing. That makes them easier to keep their job. And by the second month, they're, they're on a roll and they can support their own housing. And I think this has been a huge innovation. And rather than keep people in shelter, let's get people back out into apartments. And it's working incredibly well. Is the housing available in the area for that? Yeah, market rate yeah. housing. Yeah. Um, and we have a lot of landlords that uh, we work with. And it's been absolutely an unbelievable success. For them, it's better to have the place occupied and have income Definitely. coming in than it is to leave it empty, Definitely. right? Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. So, that, so that works. Do you have a lot of... Uh, uh, I guess, unfortunately, repeat visitors, uh, and how do you deal with that? Um, we do have some. Uh, again, with rapid rehousing, for example, um, over 85% never come back. So there are some people that do, and that could be job loss and, and other things like that. So we just try again. Yeah. Um, you know, we it, things happen. and. Uh, how about a real success story where it really worked out for somebody and maybe they came back to tell their story and maybe, you know, spread the word about, you know, the great things that can be achieved if you are willing to allow somebody to help you pick yourself back right. up? Right. Well, I couldn't sort of give you specifics because, you know, that yeah. would be a confidentiality. But the thing that I would say is if you think about the fact that over the course of a year, 600 different people went through the shelter and only about 50 are there tonight. That means there are 550 people in the last year for whom the shelter is a thing of the past. And there's everything in there from people who've gone back to school, people who have gotten jobs, people who have you know, uh, gone through treatment, people who've overcome incredible mental health challenges and are in recovery. Uh, there are just so many stories, Sean, of just people who you just have to celebrate their courage and, and what they did. And they're out there now, you know, working and just being incredible members of our community. I could feel, I could hear, the, the, you know, how proud you are of them So yeah. and the success. Another group of people you're very proud of is uh, your staff and your volunteers. Yes. Talk about that a little bit. Well, we have a very dedicated staff, but we also really have a lot of opportunities for volunteers. And we don't have anywhere near as much money as we'd like to have. And so we have um, all different kinds of volunteers. Some people come and work in what's called our help center. And that's just a place, like if somebody says, could you help me? I need to get replace my birth certificate. How do I do that? They'll help people with that. I need to look up something. Can you help me with my resume? Can you help me um, look on Craigslist and see what apartments are? So people will come in for maybe a couple hours a week and just help out, or even sometimes this may surprise you, just listen to people's story. Sometimes just having somebody that will listen and hear somebody's saga and brainstorm with them about what to do. And then we also have volunteers that sometimes bring a snack at night. There are some people that you know can't get to the meal center. We've had volunteers uh, with therapy dogs who bring their pets to the the shelter, and that's been an incredible thing oh, to man, see to how people smile on how faces. people uh, love that. Yeah. We have volunteers that come and do craft groups or anything else. So anyone that has any interest in volunteering, um, our website there's a link there. Uh, please, you know, whatever your skills are, your talents. Sometimes people help us with with you know maintenance projects or. Sh you know, shopping, what, whatever. We, we need a lot of help. So you need help volunteer, so you're always looking. Um, and also, you know, you have to, you need finances to, to yes. keep going. Uh, one of the little projects you do is uh, Homebound Treasures. Talk about that. Yeah, we have a thrift store, which is in downtown New London, uh, called Homeward Bound Treasures on Golden Street. Uh, for people who are doing any spring cleaning and have some extra furniture, uh, we have a truck and we come and pick it up and get, give you tax deduction for donating your furniture. Um, so it goes to a, you know, a good use and you get the tax deduction. 
And for people who are shopping, um, I'm always amazed when I go into Homeward Bound. You've got really nice quality furniture and household goods at a very reasonable price. And so it's good for the donors, it's good for the purchasers, and then to the extent we have any profit, so to speak, that goes to help us uh, with our programs. You know, they, they say one person's trash is another person's treasure, and it's not even really trash at all. When this gets fixed up a little bit or restored a little bit, I mean, it's just like anything else you'd see in a, in a storefront yeah, window, no, right? Yeah, and we don't, we don't take anything that's soiled or ripped yeah. or anything like this. We only, it's really good quality stuff. And a lot of times people are just tired of something, it's in perfectly good condition, but they're just a change of pace, so it's not something they want anymore, but in somebody else's home it'll look beautiful. And that is located right on Bank Street. On Golden Street. Golden Street in Golden downtown Street. New London. Downtown New London. In case you're uh, looking for it. And that location, if they wanted a Google Maps, it, it's on the website too, It is right? too, Okay. Yep. Uh, another way uh, to generate revenue is... Uh, an annual walk that you have, not only does it help uh, with funding, but it also, I think, is good for, you know, awareness and word yes. of mouth. Talk about the walk coming up. Yeah, the, the walk we run every year, and we're very grateful. Connecticut College uh, students actually organize the walk for us. It's on April 26th at 2 o'clock. Uh, we leave from the parking lot of the shelter, which is at 325 Huntington Street. Um, it's a really fun event. A lot of people come. And uh, there's online registration on our website if you'd like to take part or bring a team or, or just come, come for the walk or support, um, you know, with a donation. That would be uh, much appreciated. Uh, and, and even if they, maybe they couldn't walk, uh, come for moral support, Of right? course. Or, or like of you course. said, some kind of financial support. Uh, rain or shine event? Uh, yes. Okay. Can uh, baby strollers be in the... Uh, uh, they are, and, and dogs, dogs on, on leashes. leashes. Ah, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's right. So it's right. a good way to, uh, yeah, get the team going because that really motivates you. Um, so uh, we'll get people on the website and everything, too. We'll uh, take a break and come right back. One more break with Kathy Zoll from the New London Homeless Hospitality Center. I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Stay right there. So Kathy Zoll from the New London Homeless Hospitality Center. What's the day in the life of uh, the uh, the person who calls the shots over there? What are you doing these days? I know you were coming back from the other part of the state before we shot the show today. You know. Well, I mean, I'm really soup to nuts. I mean, I'm, <laughs> uh, you know, in at, at policy related things, and then this morning I was trying to navigate with a very confused woman who couldn't remember her birthday and where she was yesterday. So I, I have to say it's never a dull moment. No, no, and, it's, you're uh, wearing many hats, aren't I'm you? I'm wearing many hats and many, many joys and many worries. Yeah, but I do hear the passion in your voice, so it sounds like you do love your work, and it's very rewarding for you, isn't it? Well, yes, and I, I feel it's very important. Um, I'm also the pastor of the First Congregational Church here in New London, and, and I just feel like how we support the poorest people among us is a measure of our society and so every day I just feel like this is something I'm passionate about and I just want to do the best I can for people who have very very little. One more time on the website so people can go and learn more uh, get involved in that walk and volunteer and some maybe some financial help. What's the website? Um, NLHHC.org. Kathy Zoll, pleasure having you on the show. Come back a little more often. Okay? Oh, well thank you so much. That is our show for today. You can see this show and many others on our YouTube site. Till next time, I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Take care.